I'm Sukant Chandan um, and this is a uh, an event for the 60th birthday of Hugo Chavez. This is an event organized by the anti, uh, Tricontinental Anti-Imperialist Platform, which is basically believes in the unity in struggle against the great purveyors of violence on the planet today, which remains the system operated by uh, preeminently or predominantly uh, London and Washington. And really, this was an idea that came about a couple of weeks ago when, when Carlos and I, Carlos Martinez, will be speaking a bit later. Uh, Carlos mentioned it's, uh, it's Chavez's 60th birthday, and, and obviously in, in, in our political lifetime, particularly since uh, Chavez came to the ascendance in Venezuela in 1999, he's been a, a defining part of our uh, political inspiration and informed our uh, political understanding around the world, as he has, I'm sure, for everyone in the room. So we thought it's important, considering it's not being actually uh, um, commemorated, that we mark the occasion, so hence the meeting. And, and thanks to David and Nick and everyone else at Housemans for facilitating, as ever, the space uh, for this event to take place. Uh, the Tricontinentals had several events in the last year. It had um, uh, the first event of which, which uh, actually Sister Hafsa also spoke at, which was a, uh, a review of uh, 10 years since the war of aggression and invasion of <coughs> Iraq because um, it was really kind of taking stock of uh, what happened then and the successes and failures of the so-called anti-war movement and you're not going to get a, a self-critical appraisal from that Stop the War Coalition or the English left so we thought it was important that the uh, that one of the, the, the main resistant victims of uh, London and Washington system of neocolonialism and white supremacy and war etc uh, was reflected on. So that was our, our, our first event. Uh, the second event was um, to mark again uh, the Easter commemoration and Hugo Chavez's passing. And Sister Esther Jose, who is a, who is a leading uh, African reparations expert, spoke at that event and a comrade from uh, 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 that flag's uh, country, which is the Basque country in the middle there between the Cuban and Palestinian flags, uh, which is quite apt actually for today as well. And the third uh, event of the Tricontinental, and remind me people, I think that was on the Arab Sting, right, wasn't it Marcel? We had the event here? Uh, the Dan Glazebrook launch party, but there may have been one prior to that. Sorry, you're right, it was, was, it was Dan Glazebrook's uh, launch of Divide and Ruin, that was, and that was kind of really going deeper into the modus operandi of imperialism or neocolonialism or this, this, this globally operating system. Uh, so that went into that uh, um, issue. So we have, we have a series of speakers today that are going to explore uh, Chavez's uh, contribution to, to the global revolution. And I think just, just a few, few minutes of, uh, by way of introduction, I think Ch Chavez's story, uh, political story and leadership is also the story of the struggle of the global south or the non-Western world or the so-called <coughs> third world. I mean, the third world is not the third world, it was the original world, but this is the kind of racist terminology in, uh, in, in which we have to resist. So his story was the story of the struggle of the global south in probably one of the most uh, deepest and darkest years um, of our struggle, which came about as a result of the collapse of the Soviet bloc, after which the 90s saw the, the slogans of the West, the so-called West of the 90s, was the New World Order, which was first practice and kind of shown its efficacy on the people of Iraq from 1991 through till today, actually. Um, it was the, the full spectrum dominance. It was the Washington consensus, which basically meant it was kind of like a, it was the 20th century enclosures, essentially, a, a, a privatization on a mass scale, um, really holding whole regions and countries to ransom Either you do it our way, i.e. you privatize all your state assets, or you have a swinging axe over your head, which we'll put into practice like we did, as was shown by uh, the aggression against Iraq from 1991 onwards. And remember, Iraq suffered weekly bombing from 1991 until 2003 by the British and the United States. When Chavez came, came to power, uh, President of Venezuela, it was in 1999, and at a similar moment, a, a number of things happened across the world which raised our global struggle from the, the relatively uh, dark period which were the 90s and uh, amongst which was it seems insignificant but important in the western context was the rise of the anti-capitalist movement uh, those who are old enough to remember the battle of seattle um, uh, along with its kind of soundtrack which was rage against the machine perhaps and 
and that was important for, for radical youth in the West. And, and compounded with that was um, the symbol of rebellion for that generation who were, who, were youth, who were youth in the late 90s and 2000, I think it was September, was, and again it's very apt considering the, 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 the Western-backed massacre in Gaza that's going on and the heroic resistance in response to that, obviously, uh, which was the eruption of the Second Intifada or the Al-Aqsa Intifada in 2000, which really was the pinnacle of the Palestinian struggle, arguably, in its whole history which was the Palestinian leadership having been expelled from its homeland to Jordan and then Lebanon and then Tunis, returned back in a, in a very crafty and clever game of negotiation operated by the PLO leadership, uh, particularly uh, Yasser Arafat. May God bless his Mujahid soul. What a great, great man. And aren't the Palestinians that much poorer as a result of losing his leadership? We can see the division and the disunity, etc. Arafat led the Second Intifada, there's no doubt about that, and he brought the armed struggle of the Palestinians deep into the homeland and, and used the weapons he was given by the Israelis to use against his own population. He refused that, and by the late 90s, we saw the Palestinian police turn their guns against the occupation forces and then launch a, a, a Second Intifada in 2000. And, and obviously then there, was the, then there was the infamous occasion of 9-11 and the subsequent attacks on Washington and Iraq. Chavez was deep in the leadership and probably he was one of the most hard-working people of uh, the, the militant Global South leadership who really night and day tried to build the capacity, the concrete unity building and the concrete organizational building whereby the global south could free itself and to kind of develop economically and develop in terms of, uh, on a route of justice for the indigenous for women uh, for the african uh, uh, peoples and, and and the mixed peoples of his region and globally as well um, so really i'm going to allow the other speakers to really fill in the gap, some of the gaps at least, obviously we can't exhaust the, the great subject which is Hugo Chavez's contribution to the global struggle. Uh, before I ask people to make their more uh, uh, wordy con contributions, uh, there's another form of contribu wordy contribution I'd like from Brother Marcel Cartier, who's also one of the organizers of the Tricontinental, <coughs> who is going to do that in the form of poetry to rhythm, which is called hip-hop and rap. So please welcome Brother Marcel. 